Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to the Gym Rat World. My name's Rob and today I'm going to be talking about our immune systems and how we can possibly improve our immune systems. Now, COVID-19 came around. Obviously, it's made a lot more people more aware of their immune systems, how they function, and how we can possibly improve them. So I'm going to try to cover that in this video for you. Obviously, I'm going to try to make it short and sweet for you as well. So let's just get into it. So please excuse the laptop. I just want to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, but first off, let's just start off with the fact that most of us, you know, we're not scientists, we're not physiologists. So, you know, for most of us, we don't really understand how our immune systems function and definitely not how we can improve our immune systems. And that's perfectly normal and it's perfectly acceptable. But it kind of was perfectly normal and acceptable. Now that COVID-19 has come around, you know, it's not really as acceptable. We can't really turn a blind eye to our immune systems because of this virus that came along and has shown us that a lot of us have weak immune systems. So um, a lot of people are wondering how we can possibly improve it. And that's kind of where this video is going to go. All right. We don't really need to know everything about our immune systems, but we do need to know something. Our immune system's entire function is to actually prevent or limit infection for us. Now, that seems pretty simple, right? It sounds pretty simple. It sounds like it might be a quick fix, but obviously that's not the case. And maybe in a different universe, if our uh, immune systems were located in one spot, then maybe it would be a little bit more simple. But that's just not the case right now. You know, take for example our heart, right? Our heart is located in one singular place. We can actually replace our bad hearts with somebody else's good heart, which is pretty crazy. You can replace an entire heart, you can put it inside uh, the body, and the body is gonna function relatively well. Now, with our immune systems, have you ever heard of anybody ever getting their immune system replaced? You haven't, because it's a, it's a system. It's an entire system. It's a network of different signals that span across basically our entire body from our bloodstream, our skin, our spleen, our lymphatic system, and more than that, you know, uh, our immune cells actually start in our bone marrow and they mature outwards towards all these bodies. So it's safe to say it's a pretty complex system. We can't just simply replace it. We can't just simply do one thing to improve it. Now there's links down below if you want to know more, but we don't really need to know much more than that other than the fact that our immune systems are a very complex system and when they're actually healthy and when they're strong, we can expect them to prevent or limit infection. And then conversely, if they are weak and if they are unhealthy, then we can expect to get infected and to some to a degree that could possibly kill us. So, so what can we do now? Can, can we even strengthen it at all? You know, we all know that it's complicated. Again, this is a system, it's not just one thing, and the science really isn't quite there yet, but currently we do know a good amount about our immune systems, um, but as far as knowing concrete ways to improve our immune systems on our own, we just don't know that much. As far as scientists are concerned, when it comes to preventing infection, the end all be all answer is vaccinations, and that's where they focus pretty much all their attention, that's how they have, and that's how a lot of scientists are focusing their attention, is on producing vaccinations. Now. I know there's people out there, the anti-vaxxer people that are out there, you know, not going to get into that discussion right now, but just know that that's where a lot of their focus has been. Uh, but the good news is, is that there are researchers and scientists out there that have been compiling data and trying to figure out ways that we can actually improve our immune systems on our own. But again, this is a complicated system. Now, according to Harvard Health, our best options in regards to improving our immune system is to follow a healthy lifestyle which makes sense but it's kind of broad you know but they do go into a little bit of detail they say you know no smoking exercise regularly help, uh, maintain a healthy weight also get adequate sleep and a few more but let's start with what I think is probably one of the most important things that you should be starting with which is exercising if you're not exercising right now it seems like exercise seems to be the thing that should be on the top of your list. And that's coming from Harvard Health. That's their advice is to start exercising. Now, there are a few other reasons other than just saying, hey, just exercise because it will strengthen your immune system. There are a few other things, uh, such as exercise has actually been shown to help alleviate 
depression. Right now, we've got a global pandemic, we've got civil unrest, we've got high unemployment, and we've got media companies who are just hell-bent on pitting us against each other, right? So it's safe to say that a lot of us might be depressed right now. Well, why is that important? That's important because depression has also been shown to do one thing to us, right? What do you think that one thing is? That one thing is actually causing our immune systems to be a little bit more weak. Depression actually weakens our immune system. It actually compromises our immune system. And science has shown that exercise can help alleviate depression, right? Because right now, again, we're living in this time where it's very easy to kind of have a weak immune system. I mean, think of the past few months with COVID-19 going around, right? A lot of us, most of us have been sitting inside, which a lot of us haven't been getting much sunlight. And that is actually another factor that weakens our immune system. So we're sitting inside, not getting much, much sunlight, which is weakening our immune system. A lot of us might not be exercising as well, which means that we're moving less weakening our immune systems as well. Also, you're not straining your body and you also have fear, you know, and fear is another word for stress. And stress, according to Harvard Health, is another thing that we should be reducing to help improve our immune system. So we have all these different factors at play. We have, we don't have enough sunlight. We're not getting enough exercise. Um, our diets might be off as well because we're just sitting inside and maybe we're feeling a little depressed. So we have this whirlwind of things that are going on. And this can honestly be quite depressing, right? We have all these different things going on. Uh, but the good news is, is that we actually have clear ways that we can improve. We have clear ways that we can change where we can sit there and say, hey, you know what? This isn't good for me. So. Now, as far as changes that we have identified so far, we have identified a lack of sunlight as being a problem. It's a huge problem, it's not getting enough sun. Another problem is not exercising. If you're not exercising, it behooves you to start exercising because that's another huge problem that's connected to a bunch of different areas such as depression, which is another problem, and also stress. So, you know, stress is one of the things that everybody deals with every single day. So we're gonna get into that real quick. I'm just gonna cover that a little bit more because it is another huge factor that plays into a weak immune system. Obviously, you know, there are many answers to this, but let's turn to the science. And the science says that exercise has actually been shown to reduce stress. Who would have thought, right? But exercise has been proven to help you reduce stress if you needed any more reason to begin exercising. Now, also, another way that you can reduce stress is probably turning off CNN and Fox News or any news that is causing you stress, right? I'm not trying to get political or anything like that. I'm just saying that uh, the media outlets right now, they kind of want to rile us up. They're kind of adding to the fire that's already going on and that's not really good for any of us. Now also, on top of that, moving forward, when you're scrolling the gram, TikTok, Twitter, or YouTube, ask yourself if what you're doing is actually helping you or hurting you. Just ask the honest question and answer the question honestly. Is this hurting me? Is this helping me? And then move forward from there. That can also help you reduce stress is limiting your time on your phone. Now, another thing that can actually help you reduce stress is mindfulness training. And I know some of you are sitting there like, what? what's this hippie talking about, mindfulness meditation? Well, they've actually researched it and they've studied it and it's shown to actually help reduce stress. Uh, mindfulness training helps with a bunch of different things. It benefits people in a bunch of different ways. And one of the major ways it benefits people is actually reducing stress. So you can also try that out and you're really doing nothing. So um, definitely give that a shot. Now, what else can we do? Well, we can focus on our sleep. One of the things that Harvard Health tells us to do is to try to get adequate sleep. Now. Then comes the question, well, how do I get adequate sleep? If you have insomnia or if you just have trouble sleeping, I definitely suffer from that. Well, one of the uh, best ways to um, kind of improve your chances of getting adequate sleep is to, what do you think? It's to exercise, right? Again, exercise is a huge factor, um, especially a factor in actually helping you get sleep. But are you seeing a trend here? You know, exercise seems to be the thing that's intertwined into helping to improve our immune system, which is why I put it at the top of the list. The first thing that people should be doing if they're trying to improve their immune system is to begin exercise. It is the first domino, you know, but if you start today, will your immune system be impervious tomorrow? Obviously not. You got to put in time and effort into doing that, into exercising and hopefully improving your immune system. You need to put in time and effort. Now, how much time and effort? 
I can't really say. I don't know. It depends on where you're at and also how much time and effort you put into it. Just know that that is a great way to try to improve our immune system is to begin exercising because it does affect all these other areas as well. Now, am I biased? Well, you're watching this video on a channel that's called The Gym Rat World. I also have workout programs that are for people who are just starting out. Um, but I'm not trying to sell you the workout program and I didn't create this video to sell you a workout program. I created this video because we have this COVID-19 going around and it seems like there might be people that are just sitting there waiting for vaccinations and they're sitting inside without any sunlight, they're not exercising, they're getting more depressed, maybe their diet is going off the rails. Um, they have all these different things that are coming up and I've, that's why I made this video, is to try to talk to those people and say, hey, these are some areas that you can focus on to improve your chances of actually improving your immune system. The facts are laid out pretty plainly and pretty simply, right? Um, they say don't smoke, obviously. Exercise regularly. Also maintain a healthy weight. Those two kind of go hand in hand. Get adequate sleep. Eat a diet with sensible amount of fruits and vegetables and eat a diet that's uh, probably free of fast food and free of processed sugar as well. Focus on that. Another thing, get some sunlight. So again, these are some of the things that we've identified so far on improving our immune system. It all seems pretty reasonable and it seems pretty sensible. I mean, what else did you expect our scientists to say? To listen to the crystal ball lady or, you know, bring up reasonable and sensible things that we could be doing, all right? And if you talk to anybody who's been exercising for years, who has been watching their diet for years, just ask them how many times they get sick. Now, I'm not saying, you know, follow the anecdotes or anything, but I would say that for most people who exercise regularly already and have a good diet and don't have any uh, pre-existing conditions, a lot of the times they don't really get too sick and if they do get sick it's really not that bad now as always though the choice is yours the facts are laid out these are the ways that you can possibly improve your immune system uh, but yeah thanks for watching this video i i know i probably stressed some of you out i hope i didn't add on to it but hopefully you do follow these practices and you follow these activities to hopefully again just increase the chances of you improving your immune system but again thank you for watching i appreciate your time and have a good day